going to argue with that. <laughs> so let's move on to the, because we've only got an hour here, because this is officially the CWA 60th birthday party, which one has to acknowledge. Let's move on to the big sleep. And this is really going to stick in my craw to play devil advocate for this one. <laughs> Where do you start? Uh, well, he himself said that he couldn't plot. And the famous story that we all know about Howard Hawks ringing him up saying, who killed the chauffeur? Somebody knows that story already. Yeah. In fact, we didn't know who. That's, that's, a, that's a calumny. We know who killed the chauffeur. So Chandler was not interested in plot. He was interested in fantastic snappy dialogue. But the books are baggy. They're full of uh, remarks about dingers. They're, they're not, certainly not politically correct. Was that an attack? Is that a suitable attack? No. Really no, not, not strong enough. What else could we say? OK, here we go. The books are kind of asexual because Marlowe is a kind of asexual knight errant. He doesn't sleep with any of the women in the books. There's another spoiler coming up. The women in the books are usually the murderers. There's something, there's something about female sexuality in, in Chandler which is a bit iffy. You, you could agree with that. I know, well, there's Laura Wilson here. If Laura Wilson was here, she would send it. So, sentimental writing. Anybody want to argue with that, David? Uh, no, I, I would agree. He, he creates scenes and moods. And as you say, it's not a dialogue, but, but nothing quite hangs together fully to make a completely ent entertaining whole. But bits of it are fantastic, and some of the dialogue is absolutely, it's quotable stuff. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we all have those lives we can say that we can. And also, there's nothing sexier than a man who won't sleep with you. <laughs> 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 Which is a Chandler experts in this room, there must be a few. Which is the novel in which a nymphette sleeps in Marlowe's bed? Okay, do you remember? Is it a little sister? It's a big sleep. It's a big sleep. So Marlowe savagely tears this bed to pieces just because a sexually active young woman has slept in the bed. Come on. Perhaps he knew more about STIs than we're giving Well, him. okay, I'm not winning with that one. Okay, I'll. I'm on, I'm on safe territory here because we have the, the world's leading authority on Sherlock Holmes sitting there. The Hound of the Fucking Baskervilles. That's what he was doing on the Where is Sherlock Holmes? And you have this great hole in the middle of the book. In order for one theatrical effect, the detective vanishes for a great. Only in order he can make a surprise reveal. Well, it's, it's, it's down to the what you want from a, a crime novel. And I mean, as I was saying earlier, that uh, that's why they were certainly up to. The, beginning of the Second World War. That's why they were called Who Dummies? Because that's all you bought the book for, to find out if it was a murder or some crime at the beginning, and you read through 180, 200 pages to find out who done it at the end. And in essence, The Hound of the Baskervilles, we don't care really who, who done it. It's a wonderful blend of the Gothic and the scientific detective, and, and, and it's, it's a mood thing. But yes, indeed, from uh, a sort of plot point of view, with the fact that, that the main character, the man who people bought the book for, Sherlock Holmes, is actually missing for about a third of the book, is somewhat disappointing. But he, but Doyle is able, by his creative writing and, and the, the creation of the atmosphere, uh, to, to fill in quite a bit of that. But I would certainly say I don't agree with the fact that The Hand of the Battle Bills is the best, would be one of the best crime novels. But it's, it's a great. Shall I go? We've got a question from the audience early, but I'll put it in. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes didn't sleep with anybody either. It's no. fact, Jason Goodman's theory that all detectives are human. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 it is Sherlock Holmes that, gay, that is, why, that is why uh, there's been he didn't stuff... sleep with Watson either. No, he doesn't. <laughs> there are several books in which he does, yes. as David will tell you. Well, that is why there's such a fascination with Sherlock Holmes sexuality. There are loads and loads of stories now where he's, he's had affair with Irene Yandler, with Mrs. Hudson, with Watson, with the Hand of the Basketballs, probably. And, and, yeah, and, and, and because it's great, has a lot of them. So, um, you know, it's a, but there's that lovely line from one of the stories when he said, I've, uh, I've been beaten by three women, and uh, Watson raises his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> really, <but> they, <laughs> 